in this session we will talk about fundamental programming structures in java so we will see that what are the things that are required what are the fundamentals that are required to write a java program so just like in case you have, uh, you know c and c c++ in c and c++ we have data type variables operations we have similar things in java so we will see that uh, what are the elements that are there and we will see through a program that how do we approach on writing our first java program so let's say you are asked to print two numbers sorry let's say you are asked to add two numbers and print them so the following statement is to add two numbers in java and print them so the very first thing that we do in java to write a program is to create a class so everything in java be it methods or variables remain inside a class so very firstly we have to create a class so how do we create a class in java so this is a class sum that we have created this is the keyword class this is the name of our class and this is the access modifier so when i talk about access modifier access modifier is something which controls that how this class will be visible to other classes so generally when you write a you know an application you have more than one classes so you have to control that how other classes will access elements of this particular class so this is done using access modifier so this is one of the access modifier public we have other access modifiers as well we will talk about them in a different session in detail so we have created this class and we have these curly braces so this is a block and whatever elements ha which has to be there in this particular class has to come under this particular curly braces only now we have created the class next we will go on to write the main method so just like in c and c++ execution starts from main in a java program also execution starts from main so let's go on to write the main method so the main method goes like that so again we have a access modifier for main and main is always public we will again see when we go on to talk about access modifier that main is why always public and this static again the static is something we will discuss when we discuss classes and objects we will discuss the static in detail as of now try to understand that this is how we write the main statement in java this is the command line argument this void is a return type which says that we are not returning anything so this is how we write main in java again we will discuss these things in detail later on again main has its own block we have curly braces so whatever goes inside main has to be there in the curly braces only now let's have two numbers so let's say i have to add two integers so we will take two numbers so in this case this a and b is a variable and this int is the data type so before we use any variable we have to declare it we have to tell the compiler that okay i'm going to use this variable so this is what we are going doing here so variable is anything that stores a value so here we want to store two numbers so we need a variable where we can store the two numbers so now we have declared the two variables now we will initialize these variables we will give some numbers to these variables so let's say a is 10 and b is 20 okay i'll move the curly braces here so here we have declared the a and b here we have done the initialization which means i'm giving values to a and b now i have to calculate the sum now again in order to store the sum we need a variable so let's create another variable result 
so i have created another variable result now what will i do i will do the addition operation result equal to a plus b now here we are encountering a new thing which is this assignment operator and this addition operator so these are the operators we will talk about operators in a few moments so these are the operators this is another fundamental programming thing that we encountered as of now now we have done the addition and now we want to print the result so how do we print in java So this is the print statement in Java. This is the object and this is the method. So whenever we have to call a method from an object, we call it like this, object dot method and the parameters. So I'm giving the result as the parameter, print again is the method which prints whatever parameter is supplied to this. So this thing, how this is an object, like uh, what what is the system dot out? We will talk this in details when we go on to discuss classes and objects. As of now, this is a Java program, and from this Java program, we will go on to talk about all the fundamental things. We will talk about variables. We will talk about data types. We will talk about operators and many other things. So this is how we have written the first Java program. So now let's start our discussion with variables. Okay. So as I've said before also, variable is something that is used to store a value in a program. And every variable must have a data type. So Java is a strongly typed language. And each variable should have a data type. The data type tells the compiler that whether, uh, you know, the operations that we are performing is valid for this particular data type or not, or what are the operations that we can perform on this particular data type. Consider in real life example, in real life, if you try to add two alphabets, that is not possible, but you can add two numbers. So, similarly, in uh, Java also, or in a program also, there are certain restrictions based on the data types. So, that's why we give that, okay, uh, So that's why in this program, we have said that, okay, A and B is an integer. So we can go on with the addition of A and B. So that this is the reason we provide each variable a data type. So there are other things as well. So depending upon the data type, each data type has a particular size. Depending upon the size, that particular amount of memory is allocated to that particular variable. So we will see what are the various data types that we have in Java. In Java, basically, we have eight primitive data types. We have four integers. Two floating points. One character type. And one boolean. So these are the eight primitive data types that we have in Java. Now let's talk about each data type one by one. Integer is something that holds numerical value and is a whole number, which means it has no fractional part in it. So there are four integers. The bifurcation is done based on the size. So the four integers are int short long byte so this again this division is based on the size of the data type this int occupies 4 bytes this short occupies 2 bytes long occupies 8 bytes 
and bulk occupies one byte. Now, why are these different sizes? So, depending upon your use case, you can use any of these. So, let's say you have to store raw number of students. So, in case there are just 100 students in a class, there is no point of taking a log because that will waste memory. So, depending upon your use case, you can use any of these. So, these are the four integer data types. And again, the range of the numbers that a particular data type can hold is dependent on the size. So, in this particular case, the range lies from 2 to the power minus 2 to the power 31 to 2 to the power 31 minus 1. So, this 4 byte is 32 bits. That's why we have this range minus 2 to the power 31 to 2 to the power 31 minus 1. So, what happens is that generally we have bits. So, each bit can have either 0 or 1. So, depending upon how much bit a particular data type is occupying, that will decide the range. So, if it is occupying 32 bits, the number can be from minus 2 to the power 31 to 2 to the power 31 minus 1. So, the minimum number that you can hold is minus 2 to the power 31 and the maximum number that you can hold is 2 to the power 31 minus 1. Similarly, here, since we have only 2 bytes, it will have range from sorry, 15 to 2 to the power 15 minus 1. Log will have value from minus 2 to the power 63 to 2 to the power 63 minus 1. Similarly, byte will have number from minus 128 to 127, which is minus 2 to the power 7 to 2 to the power 7 minus 1. So, this is the range of values that a particular data type can hold. So, in this case, if I have written that A is a int, which means that it can hold values from minus 2 to the power 31 to 2 to the power 31 minus 1. Okay. Now, talking about the next data type, which is floating point. So, here we have float and double. Both of these are used to store fractional numbers. So, in case of float, we have 7 to 8 digits of precision and in case of double, many times what happens that 7 8 digits of precision is not sufficient. So, double will have the double of the precision. So, it will have precision from 13 to 14 digits. By precision, I mean the digits after the decimal point. So, float will occupy 4, board, four bytes where the precision is from 6 to 7 digits and double occupies 8 bytes and the precision is 14 or 15 decimal digits. So, this is about integer and float. Talking about character, character was initially used to store individual characters like A, B. So, it is storing an individual character with a single code. But now it is, but eventually it also started getting used for some special characters. Let's say you have uh, you have a backspace sequence. So it is slash B. This is a character. So let's say you have to print a backslash. So you can print it like this using two slash. So this is again a character. Character stores two bytes of data. Boolean. Boolean is something which you must not have seen in C, in case you know C language. So, Boolean is something which stores only two values, true or false. So, whenever we are writing any conditional thing or we are checking any particular thing that whether whatever we are checking, we are checking that whether the number is greater than, you know, two or not. So, depending upon that, the Boolean gives the value true or false. So, it generally occupies one byte of data just to store true or false. So, Boolean has nothing else apart from true or false. So, this are the these are the primitive data types that we have in Java. Now, let's go back to variables and talk a bit more about variables. So, there are very few small things that uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about variables here. So, here as we have seen that we declare the variable here but we initialize it here. So, this is one way of initializing the variable. I'm repeating, uh, uh, when I'm talking about initializing a variable, which means giving some value to that particular variable. So, in this particular case, we have declaration here 
and initialization here. We could have also written this as int int equal to 10. So this is also valid. Okay. Now let's say you have a particular variable and you want that whatever value you gave it in the very beginning, in the beginning of declaring the very you know variable, you don't want to change the variable throughout the program. So what we do is that we declare them final. Okay. So let's say I'll do it int final a equal to 10. So whenever I use this keyword final in front of a variable, it tells me or it tells the compiler that this value is not going to be changed. So if you try to change this value in the program later on, you get a compilation error. And since this variable is not changing, we also call this as constant. In C, generally we have const keyword for this, but here we declare a variable as constant using final keyword. So till now we have talked about the variables and data types. Now let's talk about the operators. What are the various operators that we have in Java? 